Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. My name is Rebecca Iga and it brings me so much pleasure to welcome you to this morning's online service here at Deliverance Church, Makere Hill. Special greetings to our online guests who are joining us for the very first time from our lead pastor, Charles Obwana. Here at Deliverance Church, Makere Hill, we are a church community that seeks to see the nations discipled and equipped for kingdom influence. Welcome to Hope for Today. Friends, our hope for today is the Spirit of God interceding through us, declaring the purposes of God in our time, even when we are not aware of it. The Bible says, says I have heard their cry. God hears our cry. We are not settlers in this world. Jesus said, we are in this world, but not of this world. You need to use the very tool that God has put in your hands. Whatever assignment he has given you, whatever task he has given you, he has also given you a tool. Our God is mighty. The Bible says he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. The Bible says what he decides to do, he can do mightily. Every Sunday at 6 p.m. only on Google TV. Hope for Today is a broadcast of Deliverance Church, Uganda. As we proceed with the service, the numbers for your giving will be on the screen. So please do prepare to give. But before we do that, let's get into a time of praise and worship led by our very own High Praise Choir.
worship you, Jesus. There is no one like you. Only you deserve our worship. Only you deserve our adoration. There is no one like you, Lord. It does not matter what comes our way. You are seated on the throne, Lord. There is no one like you. Listen together.
see that again And I I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. My names are Pastor Nicholas Wafula. I'm one of the pastors at the Deliverance Church, Makerere Hill, and also working as a regional director for East and South Africa for Development Associates International. I thank God that we are live today. Um, I believe that uh, there are many who are not able to see now. Not many are able to breathe like we are breathing free air, free oxygen. And we want to thank God that we are alive and we are together again. This morning, I want to share with us on a topic, walking in the presence of God. Walking in the presence of God. Now, I just want to uh, quote somebody that I came across, uh, Leonard Ravenhill. He says, smart men walk on the moon. Daring men walked on the ocean floor, but wise men walk with the Lord. And I just want to thank God that uh, this quotation brings out the fact that when we walk in the presence of God, in his presence, we are the wisest people. I'm going to handle this under only two topics uh, because of time. I will be talking, the first section will be what I have named, for lack of words, I have called it for anyone. And then the second part will be looking at the conditions and some principles that we need to adhere to when we are walking in the presence of God. Now, I want to begin by quoting Genesis chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. The Bible says, Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Now, I had never seen this. I have read this passage several times, but I had never seen this. That the years that Enoch lived are 365, which is the same number 
of the days in one year. Now, we can interpret it in many ways. But one of the ways I think I can put it is that that simply mean, meant that when Enoch died, he died at the right time, when he had served his God and has fulfilled as a period of one year, 365 years. And the other thing you notice that he walked with the Lord for 365 years. He walked with the Lord. And uh, um, that is not an easy task. Now, when you talk about walking with God, uh, walking in his presence, or here the Bible says he walked with God and was not taken away by God, we can interpret this to mean God the Father. So, Enoch walked with God the Father. And when you go to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, the Bible says, So just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, walk in him. Now, Paul is writing and saying, that you and me, just as we have received Jesus Christ as Lord, we need to walk in him. We need to be in him. And that simply means his presence will be with us. Now, he says as Lord, as we have received him as Lord. And I want to emphasize that fact, that you and me as Christians, when we receive Jesus Christ, he's not just a savior. We thank God that he is the Savior, but we need to recognize him as Lord. That simply means he needs to take full authority of the whole of our lives, the totality of our lives. All the faculties that we have in our life, he has to take over because we have received him, not just as a Savior, but he is Lord. And he says we should walk in him. That simply means you walk in Christ Jesus as you receive him. Now, it is a mysterious thing um, when you think in terms of you receiving Jesus in your heart and you walking in him. And the simplest example I can give is that if I walked from here to Gaba with a cup, and I put that cup in Lake Victoria at Gaba. I can stand and see that there are, the cup is in Lake Victoria, and also Lake Victoria is in the cup. And that's the mystery of you and me as Christians being in Christ or walking in Christ and Christ being in us. Now, you can imagine that little cup at Gaba. You can say Lake Victoria is in the little cup. I, I, can't, I can't understand it, but that is what the Bible gives us. That the big God, the big Jesus Christ can come into us small cups and make us what we are. And we can be in him and he can be in us. And as we walk, we walk in him. In everything that we do, we are in him. Whatever we say, we are in him. Or whatever activities we are carrying out, we are in him. And as an illustration, I like a giving um, of a jelly can of water. If you have a jelly can of water, and you go to get wa uh, some water from uh, a river, you put it in, you fill the jerry can up, and when the jerry can is full and it is still under water, if you touch it, it is very light. Even a younger person can move it across, so long as the jerry can full of water stays inside the water. But as soon as you lift it out, it becomes heavier. And that's why you find our mothers, our sisters in the village especially, they can go and put the jerry can inside, 
uh, hold it with one hand, but as they pull it up, they have to put on the knee before it goes on the head because it becomes heavier as you pull it out of the water. Now, I can use this as an illustration of a Christian life or a life lived in Christ Jesus. When you remain in him, life is lighter. But as soon as you get out of him, life becomes very heavy. And so that's why the Bible says, as we received him, we should walk in him. As we continue to walk in Christ Jesus, we, our lives will be different. Our lives will be lighter. That does not mean there will be no problems. Problems will be there. But all the same, your life will be lighter as compared to a life that you have lived outside Jesus Christ. So Enoch walked with God, and I want to call him God the Father. Here in the Colossians, Paul is saying, we walk in Christ Jesus, that's God the Son. And then in chapter 3 of Colossians, the Bible says this, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Now, that's what the Bible says, that you as, and me as a Christian, we died, and our life is hidden in Christ Jesus, in God. That simply means I am in Christ Jesus, and both of us are in God. Maybe you can think of some of these containers where you have one inside the other. So I'm in the one in the middle. Surrounded by Christ. And around Christ is God. So I am supposed to walk. And that's how I should be walking. With Christ around me. And a God around me. And I would prefer to call this. You get double security. When is God. Even if the enemy comes to knock. He will not reach me. He will not reach you. You are double, you are double, you have double security. You are secured double. Now, I have never forgotten, we were living in Bugolobi during Yida Amini's time, and uh, some of the readings we came across one day, we came across this statement. It is a security is not the absence of danger, but in the presence of God. And I do remember during that time, we could hear gunshots behind our house, but we were all the time claiming, saying, yes, security is not the absence of danger. There are gunshots behind the house. Anything can happen to us, but we know security is the presence of God. And brethren, I just want to encourage us that as we walk in the presence of God, there is security. And that's why the psalmist, in Psalm 91, verse 7 and 8, he says, Thousands will fall on your side. Then the ten thousands will fall on your right side, but they will not come near you. That is, if you walk in the presence of God, nothing will be able to touch us because we are secure, uh, we are covered, we are protected. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Now, it says, walk by the Spirit. Now, if you can take a picture, walking by the Spirit could be walking with him or he is alongside you. So, the scripture here is bringing out that it is not just walking with God the Father, 
is not just walking with God the Son, but he says, you also walk in the Holy Spirit. And he says, if you walk in the Holy Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Whether you like it or not, brethren, things are bombarding us. Things of the flesh are, co are coming to us. And if we walk in the Holy Spirit, and we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit, we shall not be gratifying those desires of the flesh. So what am I saying? I'm saying that you and me as Christians, when we are walking in the presence of God, you are not alone. You may look at me, maybe I'm small or I'm big, you may look at me and despise me and look down upon me, but I want to say that you are looking at me as I move and as I talk to you today, I'm actually four people in one. That's what it means to me, walking in the presence of God. When you see me, you, the whole God the Father is with me, God the Son is with me, and God the Holy Spirit is around me. And then the little Nicholas is around. So as I move, as I do things, I'm a power pack of four people in one. And that is a big thing I want to encourage us in, that we should constantly and continually walk in the presence of God. Because if we do, then we are mighty. Now, it's no, you may not have the fleshly um, muscles to be able to fight. You may not have even the powerful intellect to be able to articulate things. You may not be a rich person, but I want to say when you are Walking in the presence of God, there is power around you. There shouldn't be any fear in you, because you are four in one. There's a confidence that is in you, not relying on anything human, but relying totally on the Lord. I do remember in the book of Exodus, when the children of Israel were crossing the Red Sea, Behind were the Egyptians following them, wanting to finish them. In the front was the Red Sea. And Moses turned to the Lord. And when he turned to the Lord, after addressing the Israelites, he told them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Egyptians that you see today, you will never see them again. The Bible says, Moses turned to the Lord and cried. And God told him, just lift the stuff up. And the Red Sea parted. And the children of Israel went across. That was the presence of God. There could be Red, uh, red Seas before you. There could be obstacles before you. But I want to say, as you walk in the presence of God, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with you and will take us through. Let me move to the second part. I, just a few conditions and the principles which we need to adhere to when walking in the presence of the Lord. Let me state the obvious. According to the statement, walking in the presence of God, it simply means it is a daily thing. It is an hourly thing. If you want a minute-to-minute -minute thing, every moment of my life, it simply means all the time I should be walking with the presence of God. I like the way the Bible puts it in Matthew when Jesus was about to go. He says, Lo, I'm with you all the way. That's what King James says. 
I'm with you all the way. That simply means along the way, along the path, along the road, God's presence is always with me. The other thing that the Bible says in the in New International Version says, Lo, I'm with you always. That is a time factor. That simply means all the time I'm living, I am moving, I have to be in the presence of God. The second thing I want to mention is um, that it, you have to be moving in the same direction. That's an obvious thing. If you're walking with somebody, or you're walking in the presence of somebody, it would be good to walk in the same direction. That simply means you and me walking in the presence of God, we must be walking in the direction he wants us to go. He is leading us. And Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, it says this, keep in step with the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. It says we should walk in step with the Holy Spirit. No running. You don't go again ahead of him, neither should you lag behind him. You should walk in step. Another way of putting it, um, you must be moving at the same speed. But some of us are lazy. We want to lag behind in doing things. God wants us to walk with him in step with him. Some of us want to, because of excitement, we want to run ahead of him. God wants us to be with him, walk with him at the same speed. You can even talk in terms of the rhythm, movement, in a rhythmic way. You are walking at the same rhythm. You are aligned and focused. And uh, um, First John chapter 1, verse 7 it says this, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Now, if you walk in the light, as Jesus is in the light, you have fellowship with him. And not only that, there is a purification that comes because of walking with the Lord. So you're not just in the fellowship with him, but there's a purification that comes, as the, the Bible says. So you're having close fellowship with the Jesus Christ, close fellowship with the Holy Spirit, close fellowship with God the Father. But not only that, when sin comes, we are purified. And I want to say that our line between us and the God has to be cleared. And it can only be cleared by the removal of sin. So that we can have direct contact with him. Micah, or Micah, whatever pronunciation. Chapter 6 and verse 8 says this. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? And this is what the Bible says. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk in humility. So as we walk in the presence of God, I want to say we need to act justly in everything that we are doing. Now, um, some of us are lawyers and so on. We judge cases. We should be judging them justly. The Bible says around the throne of God, there is justice and righteousness. And so we should act or judge things justly. The other thing which to me is very key and very important, love, mercy. You can actually split the two. 
There is mercy there as you walk in the presence of God. And I thank him because the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. If they were not new every morning, brothers and sisters, none of us would claim to be saved. But his presence is new every morning. Love. God loved us with all his heart. And then the last thing he says, walk humbly with your God. Now, when you are walking in the presence of God, does not mean you raise your head up, you have big stomachs, and so on. No. No pride. The Bible says when you are walking in the presence of God, one of the characteristics you should have is humility. May God help us, my brothers and sisters, that we shall walk in with him. We shall walk in his presence constantly, continually. And one day we shall be taken or he will come for us. I want to pray for us even as I close. Heavenly Father, I want to bless you and I want to thank you because you are powerful and you are mighty. And Lord, you desire that we should walk in your presence. And when we walk in your presence, we are protected, we are covered, especially these days of COVID-19. I pray, Lord God, that as we desire to be constantly in your presence, COVID will not touch any of us. And I need Heavenly Father, not any other sicknesses, not any other disease. Not only that, that no enemy will come to us in any way to attack us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you who is mighty will uphold us by your right hand and keep us in the fellowship with you even as we walk with you as we walk in your presence. I commit my brothers and my sisters who have been listening that the Lord let them desire to walk in your presence. I thank you, but I do pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say it, Amen. Amen.